Hello there my fishy friends, my name is Peter and today I'm going to go on a little cleanup in the Vedder River. Normally I try and get you guys lots of footage of fish, well this time the mission's different. I'm strictly after gear, gotta stock up for the coho season coming up and it's, what is it, Thanksgiving long weekend, I'm not sure exactly what date it is, I lost track. So thanks for coming along and uh, yeah I'm going to show you some fish too, why not? It is not a secret, there are lots of coho in the river at the moment, lots of chinooks too, lots of things as well, but the low clear water is making them a little bit finicky. So sometimes you get into a school and they're biting, but sometimes you can spend an entire day and not even get a bite. So be patient with them, don't floss, don't snag, keep the river clean. And thanks for watching. Welcome underwater everyone. Let's start with some fish. The peak of our Kohoran is just starting. So this is the beginning of the big wave of coho that's going to push up into the river. And you can see there are already quite a few in there. They're being picky like I said earlier. It's hard to get them to bite. Here they are mixed in with a school of pinks. So if you're new to the river, little fish ID lesson. The pink salmon have a white belly and a heavily spotted tail. The coho have few if any spots on their tail and they tend to be kind of silvery or gray and pink. They also have white gums if you look at their, where the gums meet the teeth. Seeing them side by side like this, I think the, uh, the difference is quite obvious. But if you're new to salmon fishing, all of them can kind of look alike. They are a similar size. Coho really like being in between logs and sticks. They just love the structure. They know it's hard to fish for them there. It's a natural place to hide from predators. Here's another example. A bunch of sticks and logs. And you can see the coho are tucked right under there structure is like a coho magnet. They know very well we can't get to them there. Here is a Chinook salmon and um, I always advocate for better fish handling on my channel. Here's a classic example of uh, why that matters. Somebody dragged this fish up on the beach and I don't know if that was a couple of days ago or a week ago. The fish definitely isn't ready to spawn yet and look at the side it's all been bruised and scratched up from where somebody dragged him on the rocks and uh, that just shouldn't happen with a fish that's to be released this one wasn't even so lucky this one's outright dead and that again is a fish that hasn't spawned nice and clean fresh to the river and it met with an untimely end at the end of a fishing line so i recommend you get a landing net and um, that way the fish don't get banged up on the rocks we like to think of them as, uh, you know, tough and strong, but they are creatures of zero gravity. They live in a world that's soft with no sharp edges. It's not like a dog or a squirrel where they can fall on the rocks and get up and run away. Fish really don't handle being bruised very well. That was me swimming in a fast stretch of water. Here's a much slower stretch of water where I can actually slow down enough to pick up gear. A lot of people think that the river is just littered with stuff that I find years worth of fishing gear, but that is not so much the case. These gravels, every time the water comes up a little bit, the gravel shifts and all these heavy metal lures just disappear. They kind of get washed down and they disappear on the surface of the gravel. So most of the stuff that I find has only been in there for a couple of weeks. And on a run like this where there are people fishing, I can't really stop and muck around for 20 minutes and really clean it up and really find everything. So I'm kind of limited to swimming through once and grabbing what I see along the way. I'm not into getting into confrontations with people and I'm a fisherman myself so I get it people get a little bit antsy when I'm swimming through right where they are fishing but if you think about it all this footage I get for you guys of salmon it's a wide angle lens I get pretty darn close to these fish they have this minimum distance they like being kind of four to five feet away from me as long as I keep that distance and don't chase them around they're not too terribly bothered in fact, a lot of people catch fish while I'm swimming through the run or right after because what happens is the fish move around. I kind of, um, you know, make a move from their comfort zone 
and uh, when they're moving around and they're not settled they're more likely to snap at something so that's what happens and it's pretty common i see it over and over right after i've swam through somebody hooks a fish Jam and an interaction with an angler. This is what it normally goes like. How's it going? What's that? Is it any coho here? Any coho? Oh, 100%. The river is full of them right now. Oh, we watched your video. <laughs> I recognize you. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. So this gentleman is new to the river and uh, he, I don't know, I'm not so sure he believed me when I told him, yeah, there are a lot of fish in your spot. What you have to remember is that these fish are pretty hard to catch. My first year on the Vetter, I did not catch a single coho. I caught some Chinooks and some Chum, some pink salmon, but I never did get a coho. It's very tricky to make them bite, and it can take a few years to really figure it out. I think anybody that tells you that it's easy to catch coho is trying to sell you something. It's like, oh yeah, if you buy our jigs, you're going to catch lots of coho. If you buy our beads, you're going to catch lots of coho. Well, you might, but it also takes a lot of time on the river and a lot of experience. So be patient and take your time. It doesn't come overnight. Eventually, you'll start catching lots of fish. Water's quite fast here. A little bit of gear for me. These piles of sticks and logs are like a little gold mine. It's like picking up candy at an Easter egg hunt. Like another five dollars, another five dollars. It's kind of fun. It combines treasure hunting and underwater and yeah, it's all my favorite things. And I quite enjoy it. Cleaning up, well, that's just an added bonus. Let's have a look at everything I found. When I get things home, it's kind of a messy pile of line and stuff. And I take my scissors to it and I spend about an hour cutting everything apart. And this is what I come up with. So we had about 50 spoons and spinners and lures of various sorts, bunch of hooks, swivels, floats, lead, jigs, and beads. You add it all up, it's maybe $400 worth of gear, retail value. Of course, I can't sell it all. Um, these are spoons that Rodney's been pushing for a couple of years. You can definitely tell that's working. It's a pretty high proportion of those yellow spoons in the river. 